Let's have a lazy, laid back little walkabout on the patio. Let's look at some things that have caught my eye that I would like to share with you. And then, ah, uh, yawn. Let's have a look at some blooms. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you for clicking on the video. Look at these beauties. Well, the orchids not so much, but the root system. This is Catlianthe Zagarig Wax, African Beauty. We're rescuing her after my abuse with Lekka and self-watering. That didn't work too well in her favor. Same thing here with my little fairy. We put them into lava rock, letting them know we do care. <laughs> Maybe in cases like these, I shouldn't say we. When I say we, I always use it in forms of successes because you're here with me and we'd go through a lot of things together. But when it comes to the failures, I should maybe just stay singular because I am the one that's doing the operating here. But isn't that gorgeous? I was hoping that the little fairy growth here would at least match the size of the previous growth. But yeah, it's just half the size, but the roots are looking marvelous. So I just miss them every day. Keep it nice and damp in there. And clearly we are being given another chance. And I would say for both of these, that's probably about <laughs> round five. But yeah, this is a good sign. Let me see if I get this right. <laughs> Catlia Astrea or Atreya, one of the two. Anyway, I know it's Lotte Jesse I with Skinnery, but I need to get the name right. Look at her. These are just two of the four new growths that she grew this season in 2023, and they are busting their roots now. All four growths are on the move. Not going to move the orchid too much because it destroys everything else that I've got going on in the background. <laughs> Some of my perparatas are kicking into action with the next new growth, Aki, and thankfully the roots are also starting to branch again. Much needed this time of year before we head into winter. Stand the Man's current new growth count is at 14. So today I'm going to have to dig around in some of my linen to see if I can't find a bigger sheet because I don't want to be squashing the new leaves that are growing and he is growing <laughs> aggressively. Look at all of that up there. It is loaded. This basket is just glorious. Look at all of them. <laughs> Getting a lot of fertilizer and it is so much fun. Just check this out. Oof. Takes a while and then all of a sudden it's like you wake up the next day and another two centimeters have been added to the growth. It's fantastic. Tucked back in here is Lelia Perinii. Hoping that she will bloom. She takes a long time, but what I'm appreciating this year is because I've been a bit more aggressive on the fertilizer. I won't be able to achieve the long growth that she came with, but definitely this growth is a little bit taller and bigger than the one previously. And she needs a repot. Oh goody. She's the kind that <laughs> doesn't have a branching root system and her roots grow about December, January. So it's going to be a cold hand deal one day, but it's been a while since she's been repotted. She's had a bit of scale as well, but I believe what I see are now perished scale bodies left behind yeah so hopefully we get ourselves some lelia perinii blooms that will only last about two weeks but hey ho 11 and a half months of growing for two weeks let's make sure that we enjoy them when they come this is catlia gyrac cosmos i was extremely concerned about this orchid during the winter because she has very fleshy leaves and she did not appreciate the cold temperatures but oh my goodness i'm so happy to report Anonymous, look, two beautiful new growths have matured and they are also growing their roots right now, which is, oh, what a relief. This is going to be a tough one to try and make sure it is happy throughout the winter once again, but you see how the cold has curled some leaves. So the incoming roots, oh, I'm so happy, right on time. I don't know if I'm ever going to get this orchid to bloom, but just her leaves with that anthocyanin spotting. 
I love that. Beautiful white blooms also with these kind of spots on them. <laughs> anyway, just want to let you know, Anonymous, she is still alive. Now, last year she gave me two flushes of new growth. So maybe there's another set coming. She's going to have to hustle because huh, even though it seems like a long way away, the slow growth of an orchid, it's not. there's not much time left. Let's just put it that way. Mid-season Catacetinae update. So, Jack of Diamonds is probably growing female spike right here. Drinking like crazy. Black Pearl After Dark looks like it's trying a new growth right at the base of the bulb that is going yellow. That is interesting. That hasn't happened before. It's far too soon for a spike. The bulb hasn't reached the size that it had last year, but it's not too bad either. It has as yet to get nice and fat. So all these orchids, including my Celia Africanas here on the table, because the shade in the alcove above where they live, that comes very prematurely. So I pull them down so that they can get maximum light. And here we have my OG Ancelia Africana, and this year it appears to have gone a little bit bonkers, which is good, finally. Talk about taking your sweet time. I believe I've got about seven new growths in here, possibly eight. The next one in line is Buffalo Crossed with Leo. Started a new growth as per, I was hoping for two, and thank you, it came through. Got two new growths coming. Beautiful, we repotted this one, <laughs> as we did with the other two coming up, and it doesn't seem to have phased it one bit. All we did here was up-pot it, but <laughs> I'm just loving this root network here. It's insane. <laughs> I just think it's amazing. So, great to get a second growth there. This one is Kenya Mud. Oh my goodness, three new growths. This is amazing. It hasn't bloomed for me, but three new growths. It's fantastic. I really hope that this one will bloom for us in the spring. That would be fabulous. That would start 2024 off with a bang. And then we've got Puff Adder crossed with Joe. Joe crossed with Puff Adder. Came out of the gates very, very slowly. Didn't bloom for us this spring, but I now have seven new growths. I was hoping maybe for nine, but nope, I've got seven. Never satisfied, are we? But looking wonderful. This one was also just up potted. It didn't care. <laughs> Love me orchids like that. Platias absorbing whatever they can before they completely die back. Leaves are now going back bit by bit. You know what? Last year I used to move this orchid always into the shade to protect the leaves. This year I've had so much humidity during the summer. It did not phase it at all to stay in the sun during the hottest time of the day. I'm telling you, it is wonderful what difference humidity makes when it comes to growing orchids. I have a teeny tiny bit of scorch right here, but <laughs> considering that she was in the sun all the time, this is nothing. Thank you, humidity. I love it. And then if I just scooch you over here, I've got the Nobilis, the No ID, and the Variety Coxonianum over there. They too are getting blasted by the sun, but I don't have any sunburn. And look, Fernanda, nothing meant to orchids and succulents. One, two, and the third new growth. Still waiting for the terminal leaf, so they're still actively growing. I made myself a little rig here to give them more space. My patio seems to be shrinking as I put my orchids into bigger and bigger pots. <laughs> These two orchids look a little bit ratty. This is my Cymbidium Vanessa Ambrosia crossed with Sugar Magnolia. And here we have my Fias Tancanvillie looking really nasty. For me, it's normal. It happens here. And I do not trim off any of the dead leaves or dying leaves to make her look prettier because whatever foliage is covering a new leaf, <laughs> I'm hoping that giving it some shade because of the dead foliage will help it along a little bit. Ah, also a better result because of more humidity this season, but she will never be a gorgeous specimen fires holding onto all those lush, lush leaves. But her two new growths, they're developing really well. And boy, am I giving them a lot of fertilizer. <laughs> I need to repot and refresh my Cymbidium. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I lost a new growth, which was very surprising to me. I've never lost a new growth on a Cymbidium that is in complete and constant airflow, which is a shame. She only bloomed three spikes for us this season. I was hoping that now for the next season and the repot, 
yeah, I need to do something here. The thing with Cymbidium roots, though, is the new roots only start when the new growths are, let's say, double the size of what these are right now. And for me, the best way to tackle this orchid, imagine the lecker around the root system. The best way for me to tackle this is to wait for new roots because it is going to be carnage. That's why I haven't tackled it yet. I may actually need to do this on a two-day project. <laughs> Camp outside and get myself one of those headlamps. Not exactly a repot I'm looking forward to. An orchid we haven't seen all season. But she's been tucked away by the hedge and she has developed beautifully even though she won't bloom in my conditions anymore because she does not get enough light during the winter months while she is resting this is my Cylogeny pandorata isn't she gorgeous <laughs> okay that's mean this is her oldest pseudobulb i'm glad that she still has that leaf but check this out make sure look at this <laughs> She's I'm making her grow in a circle. <laughs> so this is her growth of 2023. Still going, still going. Yeah, this is going to be complicado in the winter again because she lives on the floor. <laughs> but once she is in her position in the winter, I don't move her until it's time to bring her outside. I have been pumping fertilizer into this orchid like there's no tomorrow. You can see I wasn't as diligent in 2022, but the 2023 leaves, they have increased by 30%. <laughs> We're going to have a mango for a pseudobulb. <laughs> starting, she's starting to swell up. As Cylogenies go, they will bloom before the growth actually matures. So her growth comes around late spring and then of course we should see blooms during that time period. But if there's not enough light during the winter, then all we have is a beautiful orchid that is growing very, very well with gorgeous foliage. <laughs> Going around and around. <laughs> This looks like work, and yes it is, it's a work in progress. <laughs> I'm trying to get resistance into some orchids that have fungi spots that I can't seem to shift, so I've got them all kind of isolated down here, and I'm really blasting them with back to fill to see if I can avoid the spread onto the newer growths, which for my Epidendrum Stamforianum, I believe has worked. Anyway, we'll get there eventually if you're still around. Oh, and hello, if you're still around, it's good to have you here. Speaking of Bactophil, I did reference my dendrobiums that gone sawed off and got their individual mount. I wanted to show you the root growth of the old root system. It's coming through the gaps. I hope that is visible on camera. The old root system is extending and actually growing down into the gap right there because the new growth hasn't started its own root system yet. So I'm not saying that back to fill is the holy grail, but I can't help but admire that this orchid, the old root system, is actually extending. This is very, very promising, I have to say. I was concerned that this orchid would be set back and she suffered a little bit, but yeah, this is awesome more roots to come. Fantastic. That's why these orchids are getting blasted, just to see if I can stop any new growths from getting infected. There's one orchid down there that has it the worst. I'm not going to pick her up because I'll be touching other orchids. The Patricia van Poyenbroek here and obviously the Panarica Brassavole. She also came with that spotting. It just won't stop. Let me bring you my Epidendrum Stamfordianum and I'll show you what I'm trying to achieve because honestly, I did nothing else to the Stamfordianum except foliar spray her with Bactophil and I don't have black spotting that I used to have on a growth that is already a year old and normally by now that would have been infected and I hope to repeat that with this gaggle down here. Who dat? This Epidendrum Stamfordianum always had very densely crowded kind of black spots from the moment she arrived. Of course, she has also struggled in the collection, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole history there. I'm not going to get into that. Just wanted to explain why I've got that brown markings on the leaves here. That is residue of the Bactophil. But this is the new growth from 2022 which still shows signs of the pitting that comes along with whatever is inflicting this orchid. 
but the black spots aren't as predominant. And I'm hoping it stays that way because I've got the next new growth coming right here and it is a beautiful new growth. This year as well, the roots from last year, they stuck around. Now I've still got roots to come from this new growth. They also branched, etc., etc. I mean, now I feel as though I can breathe a little bit easier when it comes to this orchid, which I didn't want to lose, but it was touch and go, and we are not out of the woods yet, but I am definitely seeing a clearing in the distance. So that is why I'm thinking I'm going to be misting more of my spotted orchids with back to fill, because why? Why? What's this? I don't want to touch it. What is this nonsense here? This is my magic wand, doing beautifully, growing such a beautiful new growth. Even with the first sheath, I'm hoping that this orchid was going to bloom for us. And then it's doing this with the leaves. That is insane. Anyway, she's on the workstation because she needs to be repotted, but I'm doubting my timing because I don't see any new roots yet. But my goodness, you know, muy frustrante. Anyway, let me put everything back and we'll continue with the tour because who that? These Fernanda Nascimento orchids and succulents are the Kingianum keikis. <laughs> Look at this. So happy, so proud of them. They got a little bit of garlic alcohol today because I don't want thrips to do any damage on the leaves. So far we've got them clean and I've got another new growth coming right here and it's just chugging along, doing wonderfully. The first two new growths of the season, they hardened off already and then boom, it felt like saying, wait, I've got more in me. Isn't that cute? But I also have more in me in form of Ta-da! <laughs> Look at her. Let me step back a little bit. I don't want to make this video so long. Maybe we'll do a blooming alley separately. Look at that. Huh? How about this cartwheels around the patio? Three spikes on the Bretonia Shelob and Marie L. Look at that. It's the only thing here I'm a little bit peeved about is that the blooms open so slowly that the back blooms already look like they're about to fade and it, the latest blooms probably will only open once the back blooms fade. Here though, oh, I love this. I just love this. This angle right here. Let me see that I can protect it from the sun. Look at that opening in a star shape like that. Isn't it gorgeous? And there's one thing that cracks me. Oh, well, we have the third spike to go as well. And there's one thing that cracks me up with this orchid. It did it last year as well. And I've said, okay, that's the first time blooming. Whoa. But there's always one bloom upside down. And trust me, I do not move this orchid, even though I'm not able to appreciate the blooms as much as I would like to. I do want them to open, you know, according to the light. So I don't move her. And it's a, non it's a nuisance because look at this. I don't move her and I still get this result. <laughs> There's always that one quirky one. Anyway, I, d I still don't want to move her from where she lives on the top shelf. I do want to make sure that everything opens nicely. But yeah, Fernanda, what do you say? Huh? I am so happy that she is happy and I hope that makes you happy. <laughs> My Colo Stylus Variety or Steady Eye. Check this thing out. It has turned into a monster. It is now in active root growth, which this year I don't mind because of the higher humidity. I just don't have any bloom spikes, but it has grown at least, at least 25 new growths and it's not done yet. This is insane. Maybe I should pull her and show her in her entirety. Look at this. Look at this. Everything leaning forward. That's because the light is over here. And then early in the season, I did a pseudobulb rot versus what's the risk, what's going on, where's the problem, troubleshooting. And this is the one that we talked about that I showed you that was rotting at the base that I could for no reason discern why. But you see, there's nothing wrong with it. Just an update to let you know that as long as the rest of the orchid is doing great, then one little sector can have a little bit of a fit and it's not because the orchid is struggling as such. It is just insane. I had a bit of a mealy bug problem here. That's because of the happy sap, but <laughs> unfortunately no blooms. Oh well, can't win them all, but she is just boom. While I put her back, I'm gonna show you 
the most beautiful bloom display along the perimeter that I have. So that might look a little bit weird, but I think the colors are there because I had to drop the exposure. It's so bright. Isn't that gorgeous? Dendrobium antenatum. 11 spikes. I don't know how many blooms, but the pollinators have been having a field trip. I can see this orchid from where I'm sat in the living room when I'm playing with Siliano. And I've got seed pods. Lots of seed pods. At least three, four. <laughs> Counting seed pods here. Check this out. Four seed pods on Dendrobium antenatum. Amazing. I'm not surprised that the pollinators love this orchid because she does permeate a beautiful, heady honeysuckle fragrance. It's absolutely delicious. Normally, if there are no pollinators doing their thing, the blooms also last easily six, eight, ten weeks, even in conditions as warm as this, even if I didn't have that high humidity. Gorgeous. Forgive the weird angle, forgive the chair in the way. I know I should move it, but I have to be back here because of it's shadier here and I don't want my equipment to heat up. And I want to get this filmed so that I can get Siliano out for his popcorn. And my two Angrecoids, the big ones, they're doing really well. Finally, I can enjoy all the root tips, all the root growth, leaf extension, new leaves growing. Even Bossery to the left is starting a new root from the stem. It's facing towards the hedge. There's a branching on the vossery as well, which is going to be even more difficult to photograph to show you. But trust me, there is a branching on one of the roots. That's insane. That's the first. And other roots are extending. So it's going to be a little bit cumbersome <laughs> to even have them in the dining room come winter. Looking through the chair is just dumb. But they have put on an exponential amount of growth. I'm hoping none of this makes you dizzy. Very difficult with my camera and my mic overheating. I can never tell when we've been shut down. Look at that. This was the leaf that was coming out at the beginning of the season when we brought her out end of April. It's grown that, it's grown that, it's growing that, it's growing another one in the middle. Oh, I love these orchids so much. Anyway, sweet sugar is starting to bloom. Awesome. Very nice big spike. This one I am also spraying with Bactophil because I don't know what all this spotting is. I can't figure it out. And if I can reach some kind of a result with the Bactophil on the next year's new growth that they stop doing this because this is a new growth. She's been pest free. Maybe a few ants, but none of that. Nothing else. Here's another new growth coming. Same spotting. It's very annoying. And I would like to make sure that if I can try that back to fill stops that, then we'll give it a goo. Tibicinus doing nothing. I was hoping for a new growth to start already. But my Renantanda here, she is just chugging along, loving the temperatures. Poor little thing is in for the shock of her life. Come winter. Oh, and Kimmy, hogging the corner. <laughs> the one thing about Kimmy, though, is look at this. How can you not love this orchid? Look at these two roots coming out of the same one. Twinsies, look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing? Yeah, I just love this orchid. Whether you bloom or not, but maybe I shouldn't tell her that. Maybe I just should say, bloom, won't you? But I just love studying, observing all the roots here. It's amazing. And Cousin It is doing a fabulous job of recovering from the cold damage. He's also going to get a protective sheet come winter of 23-24. Hoping not to repeat that. I have not moved him since he started growing his new growth. So the back part is going to be very interesting to see how he has developed when we pull him out. I have a feeling he's going to be lush and gorgeous back there because it's more protected. Even though I tried to cultivate him in the front here with a lot of misting, spraying, keeping him nicely provided with water, I think that we're going to have a bit of a lopsided look. We're going to have his good angle and then his a little bit meh, not so good angle. Methinks he's going to like the shades on this side a lot better. And what I wanted to show you, but now I'm obviously protecting the equipment, I have to be careful, 
This is my Thompsoniana and my aim was to get a growth to grow back to size as I did back in 2020, 2021. I think we've done it. Look at this growth coming in here. This has always been the stronger lead and I am so happy to see where the sheath ends right there. We still have a ways to go and I think we have achieved that goal. The little one on the side, that is normal. That has always been a little bit of a smaller lead back there, but it is also a smidge bigger than the previous one. So yeah, very happy to see this. This is great. And then before everything shuts down, I'm gonna show you my Jamelia arborescence here. The only thing here is I couldn't film her all in one go because her blooms are sequential. I didn't get as many blooms out of her this year as I did last year. I'm gonna do a separate video on her where I'm gonna feature both 2022 and 2023 because this orchid deserves her own little spotlight, her own little focus. How can you not? How can you not? I love this orchid in her little soap dish. Check this out. She's growing roots around the back here. Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't these root tips just gorgeous? I managed to fandangle one very carefully to get it inside. It hasn't stopped growing, but these two? Oh, okay. You do you boo. I am at your mercy. I think we got around seven blooms out of her. Last year, she just went absolutely mad. But hey, if you're producing roots and all these little babies around the base are starting to mature, we may just in 2024 get one of these to show a first bloom. That would be amazing because when I got this orchid, she was ah, a little bit smaller than this baby down here. Isn't that so cool though? Look at her. It's getting a bit noisy. Don't want this video to drag on too long, but I do want to show you one more thing here. My Lutins Blanc is starting on its first new growth. I'm expecting two more, maybe three. Maybe it's maturing enough to give me three growths. Yeah, bring it because I want these blooms to come at a time where I'm in desperate need for some refreshing orchid blooms that have a great fragrance starting January and then she blooms for a very long time, but oh, much needed blooms that time of year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up. We'll do a blooming alley look-see in another video, but I'm going to leave you with my little Caspers here. This is so cute. Twiddle Dee and Twiddle Dum. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please consider giving it a like please consider subscribing to the channel. This is only a fraction of my collection, but I don't want my equipment to cut out on us. And why not leave it on a high note? There we go. Buzz and scuzz. <laughs> Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.